Hi everyone, I'm Joe. Today I'm going to be doing the Know the Librarian tag. This was created by Stripped Cover Lit. I was tagged to do this first by Mark from Richardson Reads and then by Andrea from Infinite Text. Two people tagging me means I really shouldn't delay and put off doing this tag anymore. So here I am. There are 10 questions in this tag. Half of them are literary related, half of them are not. They are more personal and more varied. And I think that variation should provide for some very interesting answers from me and hopefully should be interesting to watch. But we'll see as we go on. Anyway, here's question one. What has been the most influential library in your life? And for this, that is actually quite simple. I live in Birmingham which is in the West Midlands region of the UK. And the library that um, means a lot to me is no longer there. They actually closed it down and they use it now for, I think, just government offices in some way. Because they built a new library um, that cost a very large amount of money about five years ago now. But that Birmingham Central Library, I have quite good memories of going there when I was very young, around age 9 and 10, maybe 11, with my big sister. She took me to the library uptown, which obviously the city centre is not somewhere I ever went at that age on my own. And it was just a really nice time going to the library, looking at all the books, obviously taking some of them out and reading them. And I just, it's just nice memories that I've got of it. So the new library is good, but it doesn't have the little twinge of nostalgia which is, you know, fine, but just sometimes it's nice thinking back. Question two is, an honest assessment, what will they title your biography? And for this, there's a few things that come to mind, but the one that I'm going to say is, trust Joe. By this, I'm talking about the fact that people have always seemed to trust me very heavily and very implicitly almost as soon as they meet me. This is a regular thing for me and it still makes me feel slightly uncomfortable at times however because I don't know why people seem to instantly trust me as heavily and as quickly as they do. I don't do anything as far as I'm aware to um, gain that trust instantly. I mean yes, you know, anything that people tell me I will never actively reveal again. So you know that is um, point in my favour I suppose but I don't know why it happens so much for people just seem to instinctively trust me with everything really personal stuff and also really important information in jobs and things I've had people trust me with things that are above my position in, qu in quite a significant way actually I'm like, mm. I really wish I didn't know this particular information because it's, it makes me feel a bit uncomfortable it's just one of those strange things Question three is, the story from your life that you hope your librarian never finds out. And for this, there is really none. And that is because the answer is vaguely related to that one. And that is, I think of myself as a very private and self-contained person. But that is not entirely true. Because if you are one of the number of people that I trust very heavily, then I will not be able to not tell you anything and everything that you could ever think to ask me. I will literally reveal anything about my own history to you. You know, I don't have secrets uh, from people that I trust. And there are a few booktubers that would qualify for that as well. So if, if they were to ask me, I'd basically tell them virtually anything I'd, they wanted. Um, so yeah, I don't have secrets. Because I'm a, I like to think of myself as an open person, but also not. It's strange sometimes. Question four is, quite simply, what is your favourite word? Now, if you're a booktuber and I am subscribed to you, then you will probably know what my favourite word is because I say on uh, a regular basis on videos. And that word is interesting. I often say books look interesting or if I'm going out, then various places that I'm going to look interesting. People are interesting. Everything is interesting. I use that word a lot. I don't know why I can't come up with another um, word to describe things other than the word interesting, but 
that's just me. So yeah, things are interesting, aren't they? Often. Question five is three weird things of which you are afraid and one way you would prefer not to die. Now for this, I don't have anything for the first part, three things that you are afraid of because there aren't anything that I can actively think of that I am actually afraid of. There are things that make me a bit nervous at times. Travelling to new places that I am unfamiliar with makes me nervous but not afraid. Job interviews obviously makes me nervous because, you know, job interviews make most people nervous. But an actual fear? No, that doesn't exist. I thought as um, one way you'd prefer not to die, that's not really relevant yet because I decided when I was quite young, and this is going to sound quite strange, but bear with me. But I decided when I was quite young that I am not going to die until I'm 100 years old. And this is quite simply because my body will obey my mind. It's mind over matter with me. And in this case, this will uh, be a case of reality. It's not just me thinking it. I know this will happen because I'm extremely bloody minded and determined and I will live till I'm 100 years old. There is no question of that. I will. It's a fact. Question 6 is your favourite book as a grade schooler. Now, when people ask questions like this, I really wish they would give some kind of age range because a grade schooler means nothing to somebody who isn't American. Obviously, I am UK, so grade schooler doesn't mean anything. Now, I think this means your sort of teenagers at school. So my answer for this would be and you probably can guess this, is T. Pratchett and the Discord novels. Although all of them that were out at that type, point in time, which was quite a few at the time. And I just reread the Discord novels again and again and again because Discworld and T. Pratchett means the world to me, as you know, described before. So it was an author that I always read for many, many years. And I still read today, though not for a few years now. Question 7 is, what have your interactions with the police been like? And for this, the yeah, answer is very simple. As a suspect, I have never been involved in any sort of crime. But unfortunately, I have been a victim of crime. When I was uh, 11 years old, I was mugged in the middle of the city centre at gunpoint by six large men. And they stole exactly one pound of me, literally a single pound coin. Which, even at the time, I just couldn't get over it because I couldn't help thinking how pathetic it takes six men, one of them with a gun, to steal a pound coin off an 11 year old boy. Really? Go up. If you're going to be a criminal, at least be a good criminal, not a pathetic idiot. You know, stealing that off somebody is pathetic, it really is. I mean, they should feel ashamed of themselves, frankly, stealing that off an 11 year old boy. Question 8 is, all time favourite book cover? And for this, my answer would be none. As you know, I don't place a lot of importance on book covers, almost none in fact. Obviously, I place the importance on the substance. If, of course, I can get a book that looks really nice, which I often am able to manage, then, you know, that is a good thing, and I obviously do try to go for that. But if not, then whatever, I don't overly care too much. As long as it's not some terrible, garish, like, glaring cover that just looks really nasty then I let mine what a book lo looks like frankly because it's a content and that goes for the same as people and stuff as well you know it's a uh, substance over appearance every time and it always will be question nine is how many places have you lived and the answer for that is quite simply one I've only ever lived within Birmingham the West Midlands in the UK there are two reasons why I would move away from here outside of either the UK or just to another place within the UK and those two reasons are is either I have a very good job opportunity that is fantastical in some way and indeed obviously I would then move even countries for that although it would have to be truly fantastic for me to move countries and the second is quite simply a relationship if I met a girl and the relationship was um, developed more seriously and she happened to be either not local to this part of the UK or indeed uh, she was from another country then I would move uh, countries without a major thought because a person to me in that way 
is far more important to me than living here. You know, Birmingham is, is where I'm from, but it doesn't mean that it's significant to me. It just happens to be where I was born. And yes, my family are still around here, but that doesn't matter. If I was in a relationship, that would matter to me so much more that it wouldn't be a major issue in the slightest. Anyway, question 10 is quite simply, tag 11 booktubers that you like and or admire and say why you like and admire them. And for this, I'm not going to tag 11 because frankly, I rarely tag people in tag videos, despite that's obviously the point of them, because frankly, I never know um, who has done the tags without doing some pretty significant checks. And frankly, I never like to pressure people into doing tags. But there is one person that I think could be provide some interesting answers for a tag like this and also she might appreciate it at the moment because she'd only just got back home to New York and that is Kelsey from the Fantasy Hat Lady Reads. She likes the library, she goes to the uh, New York Public Library and uses that, that on a regular basis and I think she could provide some pretty interesting answers to these questions. Anyway, with that said, that's it for this video. The links to the people that I mentioned will be in the description box below of course as well as all my social media links and that is it so thank you for watching and I'll see you in another day. Bye for now.